Hello again, Trish the Gone Gardener here. Today I'm going to go through the options of how gardeners control aphids on roses and at the end I'll talk about my preferred method. I put the question out there to a small group and received 138 volunteered responses. The question was, what do you do to control aphids on roses? 23% said they hose them off with water and 18% said they squash them. Marie Robbins said, I don't do much. I feed my roses good organic matter, foster beneficial insects in the garden, and if I see a bunch of aphids, I'll brush them off and I'll squish them if there's no ladybugs around. 18% do nothing. Sandra Hill said, leave it to nature. I have over 350 roses. Usually about two weeks after the aphids appear, the good guys arrive hoverflies and ladybugs and little birds. Katrina said, I do nothing. Soon after the buds appear, so do numerous quantities of ladybugs and hoverflies. Wattle birds hop from branch to branch devouring a lot of aphids. Eva Seller said, I grit my teeth and wait. The lacewing critters arrive naturally a few weeks after the aphids and feast on every last one of them. Anonymous said, I used to hose them off, but now I leave them and let the hoverflies and aphid wasps do their job. They are pretty efficient and free. Leslie O'Hara said, I use diluted milk spray for black spot and it seems to work for aphids too. I try all natural remedies so to keep my garden as pesticide free as I can. My aunt, God bless her, made all her own sprays and I think she used garlic and nicotine from her husband's rolly butts. Now that's recycling and she says, I wouldn't use nicotine. Manu Gafar said, I have 70 roses. This year I planted onion, garlic and garlic chives. After pruning in July, no aphids to be seen. Onions are ready and I might have to plant them again. 6% purchase shop-bought chemical sprays, not including oil. 4% soapy water, 4% use horticultural oil spray. Around 3% relocate ladybugs and less than 3% purchase beneficial insects online. Another respondent, Joe Flintham says, plant lots of companion plants that bring in the ladybugs and lace wings. I'll also buy both bugs and the larvae early in the season to help numbers. Then I let nature take its course. I love seeing the little lace wings with all the aphid bodies on their back. Joe goes on to say, I have done this for several years now and it works beautifully. This year I was a little late ordering and I planted my garlic in a partly shaded spot with no companion plants. Within two weeks of seeing a few aphids, my whole patch was black. Well, Joe's talking about um, black aphids that um, attack allium plants, so um, plants in the onion family. She goes on to say, the lace bugs and lace wings did a great job, but they took another two to three weeks to get them under control. Another method I used, found by accident, is planting dill everywhere. I have many, many, many plants that have self-seeded. I leave them to flower for the bees, but the aphids love them. They attract the aphids away from everything else nearby. Win-win. For this video, I originally planned to keep a timeline of aphids on this rose in the 16 acre garden I work in, but I was forced to change those plans because this garden, which has many roses, was void of aphids this year. So, we'll look at this small garden instead. This garden was planted two years ago. In this garden is a hybrid tea rose called Alina. As you can see, it's covered with aphids. The aphids arrive recently. Let's observe what happens to these aphids over the next couple of weeks if there's no human intervention at all. Less than a week later, predators move in. Some are so small and fast moving, they are easily missed. This leaf has a ladybug and you can see a tiny insect walking on the leaf behind. It's called an aphid wasp. Aphid wasps were imported into Australia in the 1990s to help combat aphids on roses. The key is pointing out a mummified aphid. A tiny parasitic wasp has pierced the aphid 
and laid its egg inside. And here shows a tiny wasp curling up its tail, piercing the aphid to lay its egg within the aphid's body. On the underside of this leaf are ladybug eggs. Also flying around are hoverflies. Adult hoverflies eat a few aphids, but they are mainly pollen and nectar eaters. Their larvae is not pretty. They resemble a grub with no head and are often mistaken for a pest. Hoverfly larvae, along with the larvae of lady beetles, are ferocious eaters of aphids, more so than the adults. Praying mantis and lacewing and lacewing larvae eat aphids too. As time goes by, fewer aphids are visible on this rose. Having a closer look on this stem, all the aphids are mummified and some have little holes in their backs. These are exit holes from where the wasp has emerged. The wasp emerges and flies away immediately to mate, then over the next few weeks it lays hundreds of eggs inside rose aphids. It's not until you have a good look you can spot how many are there. On this stem, another predator, a tiny spider that looks so much like a mummified aphid. As you can see, yeah, very limited visual damage from the aphids. And it seems there's no live aphids left now. It's only been, I think, three and a half weeks since the aphids arrived. Um, the only visual damage I can see, see these leaves here, a little bit of caterpillar damage as well, but the distortion, that distortion is from um, the aphids, but that's the only distorted leaves on the whole shrub. And this here, that's a bit of botrytis. We've had a lot of rain, so I need to remove that um, flower and bin it. Um, I've made a video on botrytis or grey mould. I'll put a link in the description below. Aphid predator adults like hoverflies, ladybirds and lacewing diet on pollen and nectar. Favourite plants include catmint, salvias, Flowers on vegetables and herbs such as rosemary, thyme, sage, parsley and leek. Alyssum is another big favourite and there's many more. And don't forget about the Australian native plants. And as Joe Flinton mentioned, planting a decoy plant such as dill will distract aphids from your desired plants. And another respondent suggested kale as a great decoy as well. This is the rose bush now. No aphids are present. It's now summer and more than likely the aphids will be back in autumn and then back again in spring. In my garden and gardens where I work, I like to create a breeding ground for predators. I avoid stripping aphids off leaves or hosing them off with water. This also removes unnoticed predator eggs and parasitic wasps. I try to avoid sprays even the low toxic sprays such as pyrethrum or garlic spray and oils are non-specific and will kill predators too. I use no sprays in this garden, but at work I use oil to control bronze orange bug. I have a video I'm creating about bronze orange bug. I'll link the video in the description notes below when it's done. Healthy plants are more resistant to pest and diseases. Poor plant quality has a negative effect on parasitoid growth. So create healthy plants by building up the health of your soil by feeding, mulching and watering appropriately. Don't forget about other aphid eaters like birds and reptiles and remember to provide clean water at different levels in your garden for the insects, reptiles and birds. It's all about creating a biodiverse garden. The environment, you and your garden will benefit greatly from it. Avoiding harmful sprays in our garden and nurturing nature not only creates more interest, it is fun, relaxing and educational. 
Much of the Earth's biodiversity is under threat due to human activity and intervention. So let's do our bit. I hope the video has been useful. Thanks so much for those who contributed by responding to my question. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.